Hello guys, today's video we'll be looking at approaches for making dust effects on scale models. Specifically, we're going to be looking at our Panzer III in Tunisia that we've been working on recently. Now my goal in this project was to make the convincing dust effects without using any of those bottled convenience products we have sitting around our bench, but we never actually get around to using. Here's some examples of what I'm talking about. We call these convenience products because they're very convenient to use. It's a product in a bottle for you already. However, they can be unreliable because pigments can be blown away by varnishes. And these enamel dust effects, they're pretty nice, but after you crack the lid, you have about six months before they just completely dry up in the bottle and they turn into actual dust effects because there's just dust in there. This can be quite frustrating, especially considering that these are not cheap. So today I want to avoid these products and we're gonna use more basic techniques. Here's our model as we left off in the last video. You can see that we've already base painted the camouflage and we looked at the chipping effects and some other basic detail painting and weathering. If you're curious on how to do that, go check out the previous video which I will link in the top corner here. To begin, I'm going to use some airbrushed chipping fluid and acrylic paint to build up the majority of the dust effects very quickly. For this technique, I need a chipping fluid, in this case AK Heavy Chipping Fluid and a dust-colored acrylic paint. I'm using Tamiya XF78. And both of these are applied with an airbrush. To begin, I simply airbrush the heavy chipping fluid right on the model in two thin coats using the airbrush, no thinning required, but you can also use cheap hairspray. You can tell the model has a decent application once it has a slight sheen to it. I let this dry for about 20 minutes and then I go in with my airbrush with a very heavily thinned mixture of that Tamiya XF78 and I'm airbrushing this on to simulate the initial built up dust effects. I'm doing this on about three quarters of the model. There's some fine areas that I'm going to do by hand later, but doing most of it with the airbrush now will save me a lot of time. I have two goals here. The first one is to build up dust accumulations in corners where it would remain. And I also apply a little bit of this over the flat surfaces and we're going to abrade this later and give us that caked on Tunisian dust effect. And now here's our model with the initial airbrushed on dust effects. This is just the first step. I let this dry for about 15 minutes at the most. Basically I go clean my airbrush and then I come back right away because the next step is to make the chipping effects. That's why we applied the chipping fluid. So I've got a couple of brushes here and a cup of water and I simply get the brush slightly damp and I can rub away at the surface and create some abrasion effects which can simulate a couple of different things. First of all, in some areas the crew is going to be walking around and they're actually going to be almost scraping off that caked on dust. In other areas, simple abrasion with the brush can lend a little bit of texture to these dust accumulations and make them look not like airbrushed on paint, but rather like a gritty caked on dust effect. This is a very easy technique. You simply use a soft brush that's slightly damp and we are literally abrading away our dust effects. And it's very convincing because we're actually making the real thing. Here is the result of our initial dust accumulations. As you can see, we have covered most of the model already with a very convincing, gritty, caked on dust effect. And it was actually very, very easy. This only took me about two hours when doing this all by hand with oil paints would have taken maybe 10 times that. The same technique can be used hand in hand with other dust effects, and it can all work together to make a very convincing layered effect, as we will see with oil paints coming next. Next up, I'm going to use some oil paints. These are going to be the equivalent of the enamel dust effects, but these don't dry up. I have two colors here, dust and dust. One is the MIG ammo color and one is the 502 Abtarlan color, and they are slightly different. I also have some MIG Productions enamel thinner here for the blending of these effects, and a variety of paint brushes, including a small one for applying, and a couple of softer ones for the blending. 
These are basically the same thing I used for the previous effect for the chipping. Now the key here is I've actually applied a satin varnish beforehand. I use the VMS varnish because I think they are the best. And this gives us a smoother finish for easier blending of the oil paint. To begin, I actually mixed the two different dust colors together. A 50-50 mix matched the previous XF78 perfectly. And I'm carefully applying this mixture to create some more precise dust effects. With the airbrush beforehand, I could only get so precise because I'm spraying it with an airbrush, right? Now I can go in here and tailor some more fine effects and be more precise to build up really, really fine dust accumulations around the smaller details. I apply a small amount of the oil paint, let it dry for maybe 10 minutes at the most, and then I take a soft brush here, usually an angled shader, very, very lightly damp with enamel thinner, and I simply blend it out. In some areas, like on the fenders here, on a flat surface, I also use my fine brush to initially kind of mottle the oil paint around a little bit, and then I soften the texture at the end with the same angled shader soft brush. With this technique, I'm building upon the previous dust accumulations with the airbrush, but just fine tuning with oil paints. However, we can also do other techniques now. On angled surfaces, I create streaking effects by blending in a downward motion with a fine brush. It's pretty much the same technique as we did before, but instead of a stumping motion for blending, I'm just doing streaks to simulate the direction of gravity. In some areas, you might need a little bit more of the thinner on your brush, but I still try to keep it damp, not loaded. Otherwise, it gets out of control pretty quick. The reason I'm using oil paints for this technique and not acrylic paint is that oil paints have a long drying time, so I have hours and hours for fine-tuning this effect and blending it precisely, when if I used acrylic paints it would dry in minutes and it would be impossible to reactivate it and adjust it later. So people always ask me, can I use acrylic paints? I would recommend not using acrylic paints, just buy a couple of cheap oil paints instead. Let's take a look at the completed oil painting effects. I think the oil paints were the perfect tool for the more tailored and precise dust accumulations and streaking effects. And the texture that they give works hand in hand with what we previously achieved with the chipped acrylic paint. Overall, the model's looking excellent, and we really just have to finish the lower hull now. Now in the lower hull, I'm going to use the same two oil paints but instead we're going to do a speckling effect. So I mix them up into a thin paste by mixing in some enamel thinner, and we actually apply this with a toothpick, and we're literally flicking the bristles of the paintbrush to spray thin speckles of the paint over the hull sides. You can see it spattering on here. Uh, do a little bit of testing first to make sure your speckles are nice and fine. Then after letting it dry for about 10 minutes, I blend it out in a very similar way as we did the streaking effects on the upper areas. However, the speckles give us an initial randomness to the texture here that I think looks very good on the lower hull sides. I use the same technique also on the front and rear of the hull, close to where the tracks are because there would be some spattered up gunk there as well. For the dust effects on the wheels and running gear, I first gave them a thin oil paint dust wash. And then other areas were fine tuned with a heavier application of the oil paint, which was then blended in the same way as we did the effects on the upper hull areas. I'm very happy with the layered dust effects we achieved in this video. It's not sand, it's this layered, caked-on, streaked, gritty dust effect 
and that's what we see in the reference photos of the unit I'm modeling. This unit served in Tunisia, where the ground is much more rocky and barren. It's not rolling sand dunes as we imagine most of Africa, at least the northern part. So yes, these vehicles do have streaking effects and caked on almost like a gravelly dust effect. And there we have it. I am very happy with my results of this video. By doing the initial application with the airbrush, it saved me a whole lot of time. And then going in and fine tuning with some oil paint, uh, blending and also the speckling, produced a very nice layered dust effect in the end. And I'm very happy with that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and picked up some ideas for how you can incorporate techniques that don't involve those stupid convenience products. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, post them below. I always read through them all. If you like my work, you can support me on Patreon for just $1 a month. That is really appreciated and helps me make these videos. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Until then, stay safe and happy modeling. See ya.